Hello everyone. Welcome to Mastering Concepts. Today we are going to learn about ammonia gas. Before I start today's session, I would request you to kindly like this video and subscribe to my channel by pressing the bell icon. Let us now get some basic idea about ammonia gas. Ammonia gas was discovered by Joseph Priestley in the year 1774. So where can you find this gas? It is found in the soil where dead plants and animals are decomposed by the bacteria. Now how does one molecule of ammonia look like? The ammonia molecule has a trigonal pyramidal shape and it has 3 hydrogen atoms and 1 nitrogen atom bonded covalently. Ammonia gas can be easily compressed. and it forms a clear liquid under pressure this liquefied form of ammonia is known as liquid ammonia whereas the concentrated aqueous solution of ammonia is called liquid ammonia which contains 35% ammonia so when 35 parts of ammonia is mixed with 65 parts of water it forms liquid ammonia However you should also know that ammonia gas is hazardous in nature it can cause skin and eye irritation and also respiratory tract and lung diseases let us now learn about the physical properties of ammonia gas ammonia gas is a colorless and tasteless gas which has a foul distinctive strong pungent smell This gas is highly soluble in water and is lighter than air. Aqueous solution of ammonia gas is weakly alkaline in nature and it turns red litmus blue. Let us now talk about the uses of ammonia. Ammonia gas is used as a raw material for the synthesis of fertilizers like ammonium sulfate, ammonium nitrate, NPK and urea It is also used for making explosives like dynamite TNT and RDX It is also used for the manufacture of synthetic fibers like nylon and rayon It is also used for the manufacture of nitric acid by Oswald's process and liquid ammonia is used as a refrigerant Let us now move on to the laboratory preparation of ammonia gas. For preparing ammonia gas, we heat a mixture of an ammonium salt like ammonium chloride or ammonium sulfate and a strong alkali or a strong base like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide or calcium oxide. The chemicals that we are taking here are ammonium chloride that is NH4Cl and slaked lime or calcium hydroxide which is CaOH whole 2 the products which are formed by heating are ammonia gas calcium chloride and water so the complete balance reaction is 2 NH4Cl plus CaOH whole 2 gives 2 NH3 plus CaCl2 plus 2 H2O Since ammonia gas is lighter than air it is collected by downward displacement of air and the gas is dried using a basic drying agent calcium oxide or CaO Now let us understand the entire procedure with the help of a video Ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide is heated in a test tube with the help of a Bunsen burner The ammonia gas which is produced is passing through the delivery tube and is entering the lime tower where the extra moisture is captured and it is dried. After that the gas is collected by downward displacement of air in the inverted gas jar. Now you might wonder Why calcium oxide is used for drying NH3 
and not the other drying agents like concentrated sulfuric acid or phosphorus pentoxide or calcium chloride. You should remember that ammonia gas is basic in nature and so is calcium oxide. Thus, no reaction occurs between the two and calcium oxide can be used as the drying agent. However, ammonia reacts with the acidic drying agents like concentrated H2SO4 or B2O5 to produce white ammonium salts like ammonium sulfate and ammonium phosphate. Ammonia gas also reacts with anhydrous calcium chloride to form a complex compound CaCl2.8NH3. Since these chemicals react with ammonia, these cannot be used for drying ammonia gas. Now, what precautions should be taken during the preparation of ammonia gas in the laboratory? Firstly, both ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide should be completely dry to avoid evolution of ammonia while mixing the two. Secondly, heating should be slow to avoid vigorous evolution of ammonia gas. The mixture of ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide should fill half the flask to leave enough space for the easy passage of the evolved gas. And precaution should always be taken to combat the accidental leakage of ammonia. Let's now find out how ammonia gas can be prepared directly from its constituents. The process is called Haber's process and it is the industrial process for the manufacture of ammonia. In this process, nitrogen and hydrogen gas directly combine with each other to form ammonia with the evolution of heat. The conditions required for the preparation of ammonia by Haber's process are the reagents nitrogen and hydrogen should be in the ratio 1 is to 3 by volume. Optimum temperature should be 550 degrees C for this reaction. The pressure should be maintained at 200 atmosphere. Finely divided iron should be taken as catalyst. And Al2O3 and K2O or molybdenum should be taken as the promoter. Let us now move on to the chemical properties of ammonia gas. With oxygen, ammonia burns with a greenish yellow flame to produce nitrogen and water vapor. The balanced chemical equation is 4NH3 plus 3O2 gives 2N2 plus 6H2O. With water, ammonia reacts to form a weak base, ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH. Next, we will read about the catalytic oxidation of ammonia for the manufacture of nitric acid by Oswald's process. In this reaction, platinum rhodium catalyst is taken. The pressure is maintained between 7 to 8 atmosphere and the temperature is between 750 to 900 degrees Celsius. In the catalyst chamber, first ammonia reacts with oxygen to form nitric oxide, which further gets oxidized to form nitrogen dioxide. Or ammonia can directly react with excess of oxygen to produce nitrogen dioxide. The nitrogen dioxide produced then reacts with water to form nitric acid. So, the balanced chemical equations of the Oswald's process are Step 1, 4NH3 plus 7O2 gives 4NO2 plus 6H2O and Step 2, 2NO2 plus H2O gives HNO3 plus HNO2. Let's now talk about the basic property of ammonia gas. Ammonia gas reacts with acids to form ammonium salts. Ammonia gas reacts with hydrochloric acid to form ammonium chloride NH4Cl. 
In this reaction, dense white fumes are produced. Ammonia reacts with sulfuric acid and nitric acid to produce ammonium sulfate and ammonium nitrate respectively. Aqueous solution of ammonia that is NH4OH also reacts with acid to form salt and water. Ammonium hydroxide reacts with hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid to produce ammonium chloride, ammonium sulfate and ammonium nitrate respectively along with water. This is neutralization reaction. Let us now learn about the reducing property of ammonia gas. When ammonia gas is passed over strongly heated black colored cupric oxide, then ammonia reduces cupric oxide to metallic copper which is red in color and itself is oxidized to nitrogen. The complete redox reaction is 3 CuO plus 2 NH3 gives 3 Cu plus 3 H2O plus N2. Let us move on to the precipitating property of ammonia gas. Aqueous solution of ammonia reacts with aluminium chloride to produce a white gelatinous precipitate of aluminium hydroxide. The complete balanced equation is 3NH4OH plus AlCl3 gives AlOH whole 3 plus 3NH4Cl. Similarly, aqueous solution of ammonia reacts with ferric chloride to produce a brown precipitate of ferric hydroxide. The complete reaction is 3NH4OH plus FeCl3 gives FeOH whole 3 plus 3NH4Cl. Now let us find out how does ammonia gas reacts with alkali metals like sodium. At a temperature of about 350 degrees C, ammonia gas reacts with sodium metal to produce soda mine and hydrogen gas is evolved. With chlorine gas, excess of ammonia reacts to produce ammonium chloride NH4Cl, whereas excess chlorine reacts with ammonia to form yellow pungent smelling explosive liquid called nitrogen trichloride and also hydrochloric acid is formed along with it. Let us now find out what change occurs when ammonia is reacted with aqueous solution of copper sulfate. When aqueous solution of ammonia is added to blue colored aqueous solution of copper sulfate, at first a bluish white precipitate of basic copper sulfate is formed. On further adding ammonia solution, a dark blue colored solution of complex salt cuproammonium sulfate is formed. Last but not the least, let us find out how does the gas react with Nessler's reagent. Even before that, let us find out what is Nessler's reagent. Nessler's reagent is the alkaline aqueous solution of potassium mercuric iodide whose formula is K2HGI4. So when Nessler's reagent is added to ammonia gas, a brown colored precipitate of basic amido mercuric iodide is formed. Lastly, let us find out how urea is manufactured from ammonia gas. 
The chemicals required for the preparation of urea are ammonia and carbon dioxide in 3 is to 1 molar proportion. The temperature during this reaction should be maintained between 170 to 190 degree C and the pressure should be between 100 to 200 atmosphere. In the first step of the reaction, ammonia and carbon dioxide react with each other to form ammonium carbamate NH4COONH2. In the second step, it is converted to urea NH2CONH2 and water. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please do like and share and also do subscribe by pressing the bell icon.